You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, get out, get the point. Good. And now... Fendo. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody, and happy Freaker Friday. One day before Green Day, before all the green beer and all the weird people out there. Gia. Thank God I'm staying home. Which, yeah, pretty much, I had to today. It's windy out here. Windier than me, even. <laughs> Oh, well, y'all are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, channel 3. Also on the RLM Radio.xyz site and the RLM TuneIn Radio Station and the RLM Spreaker Channel and the lots and lots of RLM and num 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 places as well as on um, YouTube later, <laughs> unless we get kicked off. And if we get kicked off, well, to YouTube. So, there you go. Oh, my goodness, yes. Children, children, children. I'm seeing lots of things for the children today. And it really wasn't, it wasn't until after I had, you know, I'd already selected that, my intro song for tonight. And wow, here we go. I start seeing all kinds of stuff about for the children. And a lot of it is uh, BS political propaganda. And yeah, some of it is serious. We need to do something. You know, you want to do something for the children. Stop with this walking out of school bullshit and um, do something for the kids. You know, like stop abuse. Stop the uh, trafficking of children for the sex trade. You know, Pizzagate, pedophilia kind of crap. There's a lot of nasty people in this world. And if you really want to change the world, you do it one child at a time. You save one child and you change their world. That's from Grammy. So, let me see. Who all is out here? I saw Gary L. and the lovely Mary B. over here on Fakey Book. Thank you, Gary L. and the Road Less Traveled for sharing um, the fact that I am on tonight. <laughs> I'm not real sure what I'm on. Caffeine, I think. Yeah, because I've been in the house doing laundry, bedding, yeah. Reading, a lot of reading. So I'm on brain food and caffeine today, so look out, world. <laughs> oh, well. Let's see. That's over there. Over on uh, Minds. Thank you ever so much, Grimmy and Barman, for sharing me over on Minds. I, uh, what do they call that over there? I reminded it over there because we, sometimes we need reminders as opposed to remainders, which is a mathematical thing, and we're not going there today. Maybe, possibly, I don't know. <gasps> okay, over here on Twitter, thank you once again, Barman, for tweeting me out. I truly do appreciate it, hun. I really honestly do. Let me check my stats here, see how many. <gasps> I've gained some stalkers. Sweet! <laughs> <laughs> I've lost a few and I've gained a few. It's all good. Oh, let's see. Um, do what? Oh, somebody with HIV bites someone. Wow. Wow. That's supposed to be a rabies thing, hun. But I guess, whatever. Okay, what else is over here? Oh, Grimmy, you know what? Truth or Monkey is sharing that meme that you shared earlier, too. Hmm, what would you do if an asteroid hit was on its way to hit the Earth? <laughs> I can't say that on the radio. That would be very naughty of me. Oh, hi, JJ's. I see JJ's is over here as well. Okay, so hi, everybody over on Twitter. I did find a few interesting things from Twitter today while I was perusing and cruising and scrolling. I also found quite a few interesting things on Fakey Book. And uh, going to get to those here in just a little bit. Yes. Stalkers, I know. Oh, remainders are leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I like leftovers myself, Grimmy. So, 
And Beetle White Sand is poop from Little Bitty Marine Animals. I watched that on a Netflix documentary. <laughs> I'm not kidding you either. I watched it and it was like, dude, that's where sand comes from? Yoinks. <laughs> yes, cowboy tech stalkers. I just haven't been able to drive my car fast enough to lose them. That's what it is. Um, oh, man, Wichita State fell to Marshall in the first round upset. Oh, darn. As if I pay attention to basketball anyway. So... What? Rex Tillerson found out he was to be fired in the crappiest way possible. Literally. Oh, what? Was he in the bathroom when it happened? <laughs> Hunt, I don't care. Y'all are just a bunch of puppets on a stage anyway, so. Mm, I'm going to go ahead and close Twitter. Okay. Let's see. Um... There's a lot of stuff about gun control and um, children walking out of school and children getting suspended from school for not walking out of school and places wanting to do um, automatic weapon bans, which basically bans everything. And so I have all these links up across the top here. And I, I was closing Twitter and I saw this one. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, shall not be infringed. Period. Period. No exclamation point. No comma. No unless there's this or there might be. No, it's just period shall not be infringed. There. Get that out of the road right off the bat. Now, over here on Freedoms Network. Hi, everybody. I know I'm kind of sort of bouncing around. I'm squirreling today. I really am. It's been a squirrely kind of day. Of course, you know, that's kind of the way I roll anyway. So, Grimmy's over here on this effing site. Thank you, Grimmy. <gasps> oh, Mary B. I see you, sweetheart. Hi, lady. She's also over here on this FN site, as well as Grimmy and Java Doctor and Rob Works and Bob Renner. And Bob's been sharing like crazy over here as well. Uh, what is that? John Kelly reportedly said Tillerson was on the top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <coughs> I'm all choked up about that. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Oh, well, ain't that the shits? <laughs> <laughs> he was taking a dump while he was getting dumped. Well, it's rather appropriate timing, don't you think? Hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Grim. <laughs> I needed that chuckle. Oh, my goodness. Okay, over here. Did I say hi to Mines? Hi, Mines. I also found Ben Swan over on Mines. I love you, Ben. Thank you for sharing all of the wonderful stuff, your wonderful perspectives that also have, you know, like some real research behind it. Thank you ever so much, sir. Um, truly do. Oh, I, I need to stop saying um, still uh, slave in. I, gosh, I can't remember what sir stands for now. I need to stop saying that word. Damn it. Hello, the strike. Okay, what did you have to say? Because I made a, a... Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, because that was a Ben Swan thing. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, so, there is a under-21 assault weapon ban requiring gun uh, surrender if it clears or it clears the Illinois Senate. Well, you know, I'm thinking single finger salute here. Just one hand for now. Give me time. I might have to do both hands on that one. Where, whereas my response was, obviously, they do not understand the phrase, shall not be infringed, period. Although I did put an exclamation point there because it's like, y'all are really pissing me off. But the strike put on there, I will not turn in my guns to the government, but if they come to take them, I will be generous and share some of my bullets. Oh, that's 
There you go. Yeah. Give them the old what for and then some. Apparently, according to this bill, it deviates from the traditional military definition of an assault rifle, requiring the weapon to be capable of selective fire options like three-round bursts and fully automatic, and instead defines it as any semi-automatic rifle or pistol with a belt or magazine-fed system capable of more than 10 rounds or featuring a folding stock or the ability to accept tactical attachments such as scopes, which pretty much... Wow, that encompasses an awful lot of firearms. The definition also includes some 50 caliber rifles, which mm, I know some people that have fired those, and no thank you. And those individuals currently owning the weapons would be required to surrender them within 90 days. And here comes the second single finger salute. Y'all just earned two single finger salutes. And I'm not even 15 minutes into the show already. And I've had giggles and everything. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, thank you. That That's a Ben Swan thing over on... Um, and what it, an internet purge. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of internet purge stuff too. And it's like, really? You guys are so about free speech and yet not. Hmm. Okay. Call me Loki. Hi, Loki. Okay, let me get over to RLM, which is where you need to be if you want to give me static, by the way. It's reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname. Join the chat. Give me some shit. I'll give it back. Um, yeah, I do. I do curse from time to time. We're all going to die. Eventually, Grim, that is part of this physical experience. That is part of it. So, whatever. Whatever. Okay. Uh, hi, Beetle. Be prepared. Ooh. Oh, Shitlery's moving in for the kill. Yeah. That disgusting. Whatever. So, over here in the RLM, Barman right up top, who is the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Cowboy Tech, who's always hearing pleasant voices, and I'm so pleased that he calls them pleasant voices, because sometimes I don't think they are. I also see Grimner is here, who is the RLM god, don't you know, as well as the lovely Moose Girl, and they will be on later on this evening for the Freaker's Ball, so be sure to stick around for that, because that is always a good time had by all. Asmo! Hi, Asmo. How you doing, sweetheart? Uh, the lovely Beth Z, who has not been on in a week and some odd hours. Wow. Where is the link for that Ben Swan thing? Just a second, hon. Let me find that for you. Um, I will give it to you. Oh, hey, you know what? I think I already have it open. Or maybe not. Um, let me give you the the truth in media. I'll give you the minds feed on it. There you go, Grimmy. So, those lovely people in Illinois. You know, <laughs> the land of Lincoln. <laughs> I'll bet he's spinning in his grave right about now. But, <clears throat> to carry on. Okay, um, da -da -da -da, where was I? Chalcedony, hi Chalcedony, long time no talky with you either, but you know, you are kind of sort of the strong silent type. Chloe is here, I had to do the extra E. What's that? I see another Ben Swan thing. Uh, why is it that when mass shootings are debated in America, the discussion always goes toward tougher gun laws, yet we're not talking about the role of psychiatric drugs? Wow, Ben, I wonder why they don't talk about that. Probably because um, they're being paid for by Big Pharma and, quite frankly, the gun uh, lobby as well. Because what? where does the bulk of the money go when they start talking about confiscation? People go out and buy guns and buy ammo. So don't be fooled. They're controlling both sides of this equation. Seriously. <sighs> 
and it's infuriating as hell. So I'll go ahead and put this one over on uh, in the chat room as well. Um, oh, Beetle, you're so funny. The Beetles will turn theirs in. <laughs> yeah, sure they will. Uh huh. Right. <laughs> you do realize that when they make a law and someone does not turn it in, that instantly makes them a criminal. You know, that's part of what laws are. Uh, that's the purpose of laws these days is um, so that they can have more criminals, so they can have job security. Because, you know, how can you enforce laws if you don't have laws to enforce? And for people to, you know, like apply a little bit of critical thinking and say, mm, no, I'm not planning on doing any harm with what I have. So therefore, you cannot have it. It is mine. You know, and it's it call me crazy. I know. I resemble it. Okay, back to say, Chloe the Hippie is here as well. Hey, Chloe the Hippie, you know what, sweetheart, you ever want to play in the dirt, come on over. Because, yeah, we had a lot of dirt flying in the air today. Oklahoma's got it now. I'm here, kind of, sort of. I did not blow away. My name did not change to Dorothy. Yay! I also see I be Don C as well as I be Don C. Woike. There ain't no more Graham Z. Woike. Darn. <laughs> Actually, I'm always working now. It's just for me. Gives me a smile. Yeah, many do fall for the gun confiscation, but that's pretty much where you just kind of go, mm, single finger salute to you too. That's my gun. I have a finger gun, and here's that single finger. So, uh, hi, Java, 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 Java Doctor 2. How you doing, darling? How's that lovely Lily? I haven't heard you talk about her lately. JJ's! The wonderful Scottish feller, as well as Juana Taco. Mm, that's still up for debate this weekend. Going down to see my mom and grandkids and daughters. Sweet on Sunday. So on Sunday, so I will miss out on the blues and I'll miss out on Hal. And I don't know if I'll miss out on the road less traveled or not. Gary Ellen Gigi's boo. I'm not sure if I'll be back in time for that. I'll try. Uh, let's see. Meister Brower. Hey, Woody. How you doing? The lovely rain. We had some of that today along with the wind. How do I know? Because there were dirt spots on my windows. Thanks. I also see RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel, don't you know? Um, Rob Works is here and I saw he fired up that bubbler earlier this evening. Thank you, Rob, for the bubbler. Tiny bubbles in the bong. Ah, uh, <laughs> I trust no one. How are you doing, sweetie? Um, Woodman and Woodman underscore. So we got a trifecta of Meisterbrauer slash Woodman going on. Holy crap and holy. I also see Beetle. Hi, Beetle. And you know what, hun? I do love you. I love everybody. So hugs, hun. I hope everything's going well with you and your chillins and, and Pippi and your little grandbaby too. Uh, Colfax 101. Hi, Colfax. Although I know you're not in right now, you are marked away. Dima is here. Hi, Dima. And looky there, Dorky Lynn is here as well. Hi, Dorky Lynn. Um, frumpy, frumpy, frumpy. I'm frumpy today. I stayed frumpy all day. Today was a PJ kind of day. I didn't go outside, so why change? Uh, Kozu is in the house. Hi, Kozu. And, oh my God, another Meister Bra. That's four of them. Holy crap, that's way too many. The world is going to curse blowed or implode or something. Moy, 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 moy is also in the chat, as well as Poxified and Pompa Pon Sauce. And looky there, Slim Jim Flim is here. And Teddy, the cuddly one, and to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Phantom 2. Why is he a Phantom 2 when he's the one and only? Because he says so, that's why. And he's the one that did my intro for my show. Thank you once again, Phantom. I gotta tell you all the time. Uh, hi, Beetle. Okay, wow, Mental Pancakes is going nuts over here on Mines. Yay, Mental! Mental shares some of the coolest stuff, some of the weirdest stuff, too. But really, he does share some pretty cool stuff. Oh, Black Eyed Peas. What's that? I need to get that Black Eyed Peas song, too. As soon as I remember the name of it. <laughs> uh, a White House official tells Chuck Schumer and Democrats for... What? Tells off 
Chuck Schumer and Democrats for historical obstruction. <laughs> I love it when people get told off because then I don't feel so alone because I do that quite frequently myself, in case you haven't noticed. Hi, Tanwadi. How are you doing, sweetie? Over here on Mines. She's such a lovely young lady as well. Okay, now to get to some of the fun things that I found in my perusing and cruising and scrolling today. Um, fire all Obama. Why didn't he fire all Obama appointees to start with? Duh. Okay. How about we go with this one? This one is the one that I kind of went, wow, really? It's from MSN, mind you, but it's it's on several other media outlets, and it's on the Internet, so it must be true. And I'm going to get to something about that here in a minute as well, as soon as I finish this. Apparently, an Ohio student was suspended for staying in class during the walkouts. Hmm. In Hilliard, Ohio, as a matter of fact, an Ohio school... Uh, Ohio high school student, yeah, say that three times fast, that, 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 says that he tried to remain non-political during the school walkouts over gun violence and was suspended for a day because he stayed in the classroom instead of joining protests or the alternative, a study hall. Hilliard senior Jacob Shoemaker says school isn't the place for politics and he wasn't taking sides Wednesday. The district says it's responsible for student safety and they can't be unsupervised. Well, obviously, well, okay, I remember my senior year. <laughs> I shouldn't have been left unsupervised either. Oops. Jacob's citation was for not following instructions and was shared online by a friend, prompting a flood of messages to his father. Scott Shoemaker says that some people thought his son was suspended for walking out, and angry comments accumulated, including some that mistook Scott for the principal. And he says he got a couple of death threats and had to consider switching phone numbers. Wow! That's insane! Absolutely insane. But, mm, you know, it's it's insane to suspend, of course, you know, he wasn't following instructions, and that's what public education is for, is to turn you into good little drones, so that you follow instructions, you are taught just enough, just enough to be capable to do the jobs that, quote unquote, they want you to do. So, yeah. Oh. Pippi just typed that? How funny. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to put this over on the effing side as well. Although I do believe someone already... <gasps> Bobby! I see you, Bobby, over here on this effing site, Freedoms Network, which is pretty much Bo Diddy and Grimner. Hey there. I think Bo Diddy kind of sort of uh, abdicated it over to you, didn't he, Grim? You kind of, yeah, hold the strings on that one too, huh? Okay, so, you know, this kind of thing, when I saw it this time, it was like, wow, MSN's got it. And then I saw it again on Fox, faux news. And then I saw it again on another link and it was like holy smokes you know how the media just kind of feeds off of and i'm part of the media too because i i take what they put out there and i put it out to you guys and laugh at most of it and sometimes rant at some of it but i have you know i have a good time whether i'm growling or giggling double g's don't you know but you know i got to to thinking about this earlier today, actually, while I was watching uh, World's Greatest Hoaxes on Netflix, I unfortunately watched through my eyelids the one about the alien autopsy, so, <laughs> darn it all, but I did watch the one about the uh, Orson Welles thing and War of the Worlds, and you know, when that happened, apparently, the uh, quote-unquote 
panic that ensued from that radio program on Halloween night? Oh, Bo just ain't... Well, I know Bo's very busy with construction and all that other fun stuff. Thank you, Grim. Um, what? Okay, so... In any case, back... No, Doozer, I don't want you on my lap. You have sharp claws. Okay. Sorry, my cat wanted up here. Okay, so... In 1938, there was a media war going on, not unlike what's going on now between the uh, corporate lame-ass propaganda system or the mainstream media, however you wish to refer to it, and the alternative news sites. You know, those people that actually go out there and go, wait a minute, I got to call bullshit on that. Hi, Kate. Kate's back. Yay! Um, but... Um, Back in 1938, the media war was between radio and print, or the newspapers. And um, so when you had, you know, people die every day. That's just part of life. You know, part of this physical realm is that people die. Things die. Nothing in the physical realm lasts forever. Nothing. But they had, you know, some people jumped out of windows some people went running into the streets but it really wasn't the craziness that the newspapers portrayed it to be you know they were saying that oh my god there was thousands of people actually what the media did was they added a zero to the end of the number of people that you know freaked over the radio program. Yeah, some were a little disturbed or unsettled, but they knew from the if they got in on the beginning of the radio broadcast, they knew that it was Orson Welles and he was just doing his thing. And at the end of the broadcast, they also knew it was just Orson Welles and he was just doing his thing and it was basically the radio's way of, you know, doing the the uh, knock and run thing on Halloween or, you know, the the spook, the trick, as opposed to the treat kind of thing on Halloween. Since they couldn't do that to everybody door to door, they went through the radio instead. But they were trying to put it out there as it was on the radio, so it must be true. You know, and that's that's kind of the way the newspapers were putting this out there is people thought it was true because it was on the radio. And granted, during that time frame, there was an awful lot of craziness going on. You had uh, the buildup for World War Two and uh, Churchill was doing his thing of letting the America know that they weren't going to stand on the side for long. You know, that kind of blotty blotta drums of war bullshit and quite frankly the radio was the internet of that time frame you know um, FDR used the radio to um, much like Trumples uses Twitter you know he had his little fireside chats and everybody got to sit there right close to that noise box and hear the president speak and now everybody gets to get on Twitter if they've got Twitter and they can see what the POTUS has to say although POTUS to me is no longer president of the United States it's just puppet of the United States he's just the one that gets to fulfill that role for this little time frame and for as long as they decide they want to keep him around and and if he doesn't do as they're bidding they will cut those strings and it will not be a pleasant thing when they do but who are they not real sure but yeah and you know at the end of that that um hoax video where they were talking about how um, there was a psychologist on there that that said that she thinks that people are more media savvy now because of Facebook and Twitter and Minds and RLM chat and whatever else but what I think is really I don't know that we're necessarily more savvy because there's still people out there 
that, you know, if they see it on the internet, it must be true. And just like if they heard it on the radio, it must be true. They don't research anything. And a lot of people don't go beyond the headlines. Now, I personally, that's how I choose a lot of the articles that I go to for my radio shows is the headline grabs me and then I start on it. And if I don't like it, <laughs> well, then I just move along because I'm bored by then. But um, I'm either bored or I'm just really, really frustrated that seriously, somebody actually put that out there. Holy smokes, man. Mm, there are some very interesting people out there and they vote, which is even scarier. So um, I don't think we are more savvy. I think humanity is still pretty much easily swayed by some kind of person in authority you know and we will basically go along with whatever and I say we collectively because I myself am also guilty of this if I happen to agree with the narrative that's being spewed I will go along with it and I catch myself occasionally getting um, and then occasionally I have people catch up with me and go yo <laughs> you're messed and I'll show you why um, if I agree with something I will I will support it until I find out that I was really wrong which hurts sometimes but uh, you know you gotta people are swayed people people make an awful lot of decisions based on feels as opposed to logic and um, even even when I logically go along with a headline or whatever narrative is being spewed at the time, it still got me by the feels, which is why I even went so far as to look into it for a logical agreement as well. So, you know, people are not more savvy. People are still people, and people are gullible and people will fall for what fits their personal narrative that's just pretty much the way this world works so you know the more things change the more they stay the same pretty much says it all so um let's see where do i want to go first how about with these student walkouts I'm going to do, this is from the other day. I didn't get to it. Lord only knows why. Actually, it's from February of this year. Um, it's from KTSA.com. An open letter from a teacher to students walking out. So, whoever this man is, his open letter to students thinking about walking out of school as a protest touched a nerve on our show. And here is a, the complete letter as I saw it. That was from Jack Riccardi. I believe that's how you pronounce that. So, dear students, I know you. I'm a retired teacher of 24 years. I have taught you as 7th graders all the way through 12th grade. This is not a tweet or a text. It's called a letter. Lengthy and substantial. Do you really want to make a difference? Are you sincere about making your schools safe? Well, don't walk out. Read this instead. Walking out of school is easy compared to what this letter will challenge you to do. First of all, put down your stupid phone. Look around at your classmates. Do you see a kid over in the corner, alone? He could likely be our next shooter. He needs a friend. He needs you. Go and talk to him. Befriend him. Chances are, he won't be easy to like. But it's mainly because no one has tried to like him. Ask him about him. Get to know him. He's just like you in that respect. He wants someone to recognize him as a fellow human being. But few people have ever given him a chance. But you can. Next thing, see that kid eating lunch all alone? He could likely be our next shooter. 
Invite him to eat lunch with you. Introduce him to your fold of friends. You'll most likely catch a lot of flack from your friends that you eat with because, well, they don't want him upsetting the balance of their social order. After all, who you hang out with is critical to your status, is it not? If status is important to you, don't you think it's important to him also? And the only difference being that he has no status because generally, shooters have no friends. So are you seriously serious about wanting to make your school safe? Invite him to your lunch table and challenge your friends to do something meaningful with 30 minutes of their lives each day. Lastly, are you completely frustrated by that kid who always disrupts your class and is constantly sent to the principal's office? He could likely be our next shooter. Do you know why he causes so much trouble? He initiates disruption because that's the only thing he does that gets him attention. And even bad attention is better than no attention that he receives from you and your classmates. You secretly wish he would get kicked out of school or sent to an alternative disciplinary school so that he wouldn't disrupt your classes anymore. That somehow he would just disappear. Well, guess what? He already feels invisible in a school of thousands of classmates, you included. So before he acts out in your next class, why don't you try to tell him that you'd be willing to help him with the assignment that was just given? Or why don't you ask him to join your study group? If you really want to blow his mind, ask him for help on the assignment. He's never been asked that. Ever. Now, if you've read this far, you probably really do care about the safety of your school. Don't trust that walking out of school will bring an answer. Gun control or more laws is not and will not be the answer. You are the answer. Your greeting, your smile, your gentle human touch is the only thing that can change the world of a desperate classmate who may be contemplating something as horrendous as a school shooting. Look past yourself and look past your phone and look into the eyes of a student who no one else sees. Meet the gaze of a fellow human being desperate to make contact with anyone, even just one person. You, if you really feel the need to walk, walk toward that person. Your new friendship can relieve the heartache of one person and in doing so possibly prevent the unjustifiable heartbreak of hundreds of lives in the future. I know you. I trust you. You are the answer. And teachers, my fellow guardians of our youth, I know you too. I know the desire of wanting to make a difference in a young person's life. I know the thrill of stepping in front of a classroom of students, but simultaneously intimidated by the trust bestowed upon you. I also know the crushing, sometimes unbearable responsibility that your shoulders are asked to carry. But that's why you got into teaching, because you have big shoulders and a big heart. You're overworked. I would add underpaid, but you didn't get into teaching for the pay, so it needn't be said. Underappreciated and exhausted. May I add one more item to that list? You're also a miracle waiting to happen in the life of your worst student. He could likely be our next shooter. So the next time, and there's always a next time, that he's ready to wreak havoc in your classroom, I challenge you to pull him aside and ask him if he's okay, if there's something bothering him, and is there anything you can do to help. Your genuine concern for him may be just the miracle he's looking for. The miracle we're all looking for.
I know you. I trust you. You are the answer. This is from a former teacher who has or who is as heartbroken as you and trusting you not to walk out on the real answer. Signed, David. Yes, teachers really do have first names. Blair. I love that letter. And yeah, see the problem is when you go out and you make all of these feel-good, knee-jerk, legislative maneuverings, that doesn't solve anything. All it does is abdicate your responsibility for doing something right there, up close and personal. That's the only reason why we have laws, because people don't step up and do the up close and personal. So, you know, next time when you think that someone might be having a little bit of a problem or, you know, when you're just walking down the street, smile at those that you greet. Say hello. You never know whose day you might make. Good night. I know, Grim, pop psychology nonsense, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. But people need to understand eye to eye contact. Get involved. I don't want to be involved. How many times have we heard that when it comes to, or I didn't want to get involved? When it came to, we knew something was going on, but I didn't want to get involved. Yeah, get involved. And you don't have to do it on the notion, national or global level. Do it on the local level. That's how you change things. It starts from the small and works its way out. Not being involved is the cancer of this society. Lack of personal responsibility is the cancer of this society. That's my opinion. So, okay, putting this over here on the effing site as well. And then I am going to move on to my next one, probably pop psychology bullshit. But that's okay. I like pop psychology because I'm a mom. <laughs> and I like pops. <sighs> Moving along. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Now, where are we? Um, okay, covered that, covered that. Okay. Another one from Ben Swan. Thank you, from Truth in Media. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, for those of you into cryptocurrency, yay. In Dash Force News, Google has announced that it will be cracking down on cryptocurrency related advertising, furthering the crypto blackout online. According to new policies related to financial services, <clears throat> excuse me, to be rolled out in June, among newly banned content will be anything related to cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies and related content, including but not limited to initial coin offerings, cryptocurrency exchanges, cryptocurrency wallets, and cryptocurrency trading advice. Yay! So while the spirit of the ban appears to be targeted at ICOs and speculation, it will also affect other cryptocurrency information as well. From simple usage guides to wallets, news sites, general information, and more. Google follows in Facebook's footsteps in the crypto ad crackdown. Earlier this year, Facebook similarly banned cryptocurrency related advertising. Now, with Google joining the ban, two of the most powerful online advertising networks have blocked out cryptocurrency. See, it's a single finger salute kind of night, let me tell you. Google, oh, just Google off. I remember reading something months back about that's the new F bomb. It's a G bomb now. Google off. So now, with Google joining the ban, okay, I already said that, um, this united front will make reaching new users considerably more difficult. 
and will increase the value of earned media, solidifying gatekeeper status by major publications. Additionally, it may also give rise to more covert approaches to dodging ad filters with cryptocurrency-related content packaged as something else. So, Dash's competitive advantage over the cryptocurrencies is its significant treasury, which can fund all manner of promotional initiatives in-house. However, the recent ad blackout has significantly complicated purely advertising-related proposals, reducing the ability to simply fund Dash ads to increase its user base. The situation increases the importance of other promotional measures, such as conference sponsorships and speaking opportunities, as well as grassroots promotional initiatives, including meetup programs. Yes. Yeah, I know, Grimmy. The Zio Bankster hate the cryptocurrency, and therefore, what, well, they hate it and they fear it because it is competition to them. And it is, it can quite possibly be the key to their destruction. So they do fear it. And therefore, they must keep you from getting involved in it. Additional, or additionally, difficulties in running normal advertisement increase the value of strategic media partners. So this goes on, yada, 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 lots of whatever. Advertising mumbo jumbo. Thank you, Ben Swan, you know, for the little heads up on this. Yeah. If you cannot control it, control it by banning it. Once again, censorship rears its ugly head. But it's for your own good. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. You know, um, I saw this on Fakie Book earlier today um, kids are walking out of school because of gun violence and yet there are on average 11 children killed every day in automobiles because of texting and driving so how about we ban cell phones in the hands of children or cars in the hands of children and by children, I mean those mentally childlike. <laughs> because, of, oh wait, that's me too. Oh shit. Okay, I'm going to have to rethink this. <laughs> oh hell, how about we just make people be personally responsible for this nonsense? You know, you do something stupid, you pay the price. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Sometimes that equal is a little bit more equal than another. You know, kind of like the whole feminist notion of my half is bigger than your half because I'm a feminazi and you're not. Although I'm not a feminazi, I did. Uh, wow. Kind of sort of like, um, what was that other one? The CIA said that it's okay if they meddle in other countries' elections because because their meddling's better than the other countries' meddling's because, well, the other country, Russia! Yeah, that's the boogeyman again. I. There is so much silliness, so much nonsense out there that sometimes you just plain got to shake your head just to hear the rocks rattle around. Or the nuts, in my case, since I am kind of sort of squirrely. So. Okay, we'll do this one. And there we go. Um, back to my pocket I go, because I do have, I have, I have stuffed my pocket. <laughs> um, oh, where do I want to go? Where do I want to go? Okay. Since I talked a little bit about... Um, let's... Oh, do I want to go there? I'm not sure. You know, I probably ought to do the both sides of the equation kind of thing. Mm. Okay, here's an opinion. For all you what America's gun fanatics won't tell you. I threw this in my pocket earlier, and I'm kind of sort of questioning why I did this. 
it's from June of 2016, so it's prior to the latest little false flag Trump up. Be afraid, but for the children. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the Second Amendment doesn't give you the right to own a gun. Oh, really? Well, actually, no, it does not give you the right to own a gun because, you know, that is an inherent right. The Constitution doesn't give you any rights. It stipulates rights that the government is not allowed to infringe upon. Constitution is supposed to be a limitation on the government. It does not give you anything. You already have those things. Mm. So, as this article goes, this is from MarketWatch.com, by the way. Can we please stop pretending that the Second Amendment contains an unfettered right for everyone to buy a gun? It doesn't, and it never has. Oh, really? So, the claims made by a small number of extremists before and after the Orlando, Florida massacre are based on a deliberate lie. Let's find out. The Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution doesn't just say Congress shall not infringe the right to keep and bear arms. It specifically says that right exists in order to maintain a well-regulated militia. Even the late conservative Supreme Court Associate Justice Antonin, Antonin Scalia um, admitted those words weren't in there by accident. Oh, and the Constitution doesn't say a uh, militia. It says a uh, well-regulated militia. So what did the Founding Fathers mean by that? We don't have to guess because they told us in Federalist Number 29 of the Federalist Papers. Alexander Hamilton explained at great length precisely what a well-regulated militia was why the Founding Fathers thought we needed one, and why they wanted to protect it from being disarmed by the federal government. The Second Amendment is an art instrument of government. Oh, really? It's not about hunting or gun collecting or carrying your pistol into the saloon. Wow, really? It doesn't say that it is either, or is not. So, hmm. And there's a reason absolutely no gun extremists <clears throat> Excuse me. All this dirt in the air. There's a reason absolutely no gun extremist will ever direct you to that. Um, the 1788 essay because it blows their baloney into a million pieces. Really? A well-regulated militia didn't mean guys who read Soldier of Fortune magazine running around in the woods with AK-47s and war paint on their faces. It basically meant what today we call the National Guard. Oh, no, no, no. No, honey, you're mm, just a wee bit off on that. It should be properly constituted, ordered, and drilled, well-regulated. Um, you say regulated, I don't think means what you think it means, sweetheart, but that's okay. Um, and it should be a military force. No, 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 no. Organized by st state by state, explained Hamilton. You do realize that Hamilton was a royalist. Just throwing that out there as well. <clears throat> yeah, and um, each state militia should be select corps, well-trained, and able to perform all the operations of an army. The militia needed uniformity in organization and discipline, wrote Hamilton, <clears throat> excuse me, so that it could operate like a proper army in camp and field, and so that it could gain the essential degree of proficiency in military functions. And although it was organized state by state, it needed to be under the co explicit control of the national government. No, 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 no. Because what if it's a national government? Hmm? You know, in case you needed to have that well-regulated militia to overthrow the tyrant that the government has become. Um, what? Oh, and there is a, a comment on this as well. Okay, um... 
Let's see. Now, okay. Moving along, where was I at? Before I totally lost it. <laughs> huh. Okay, the, according to Hamilton, the well-regulated militia was under the command of the president. No, it is not. And it was the military arm of the government. No, it is not. <coughs> Excuse me. Or not anymore, it sure ain't. So, the one big difference between this militia and the professional army, it shouldn't be made up of full-time professional soldiers, said the Founding Fathers. Such shoulder soldiers could be used against the people as King George had used his mercenary redcoats. Instead, the American Republic should make up its military force from part-time volunteers drawn from regular citizens. You're going to volunteer whether you like it or not, but you're volunteering. So they say. Such men would be less likely to turn on the population. Yeah, till they get through that whole um, training and regulation and organization and disciplinary bullshit. You know, the mind molding stuff that the uh, military forces go through in basic training. Think about it. And the creation of this well-regulated militia, a.k.a. National Guard, would help safeguard the freedom of the new republic because it would make the creation of a professional mercenary army unnecessary, wrote Hamilton. Oh, times they are changing, dear one. This appears to me the only substitute that can be devised for a standing army and the best possible security against it, he wrote. You know, I, w I wonder if our regula well-regulated militia is supposed to be the National Guard that is supposed to maintain the safety and security of these United States. Um, if that's what it's supposed to be for, why was it that the first ones that got sent over to the Middle East were National Guard units? I want to know that. If they were supposed to be for over here, you know why? Because they wanted to get that indoctrination thing going. Because we can't have a well-regulated militia that might actually, you know, not go along with the orders of the regular army. So if you treat them as regular army and tell them that they are regular army and that they have to follow orders, they are no longer a well-regulated militia that is to, supposed to be protecting us against a government that's turned tyrannical. <gasps> Shock! So, apparently he says that was the point, and that is why they wanted to make sure that it couldn't be disarmed by the federal government. Mm, and yet it's supposed to be under control of the federal government. Dude, your circular logic here just ain't working. So that a future tyrant couldn't disarm the National Guard and then use a mercenary army to impose martial law. Yeah, uh-huh, and they pretty much effectively did that because they used the National Guard during, what was it, Hurricane Katrina to round up guns and disarm the populace. You don't call that tyrannical? Overstepping a little? Mm. The Founding Fathers didn't call the Republic's new force an army because that term, uh, more than two centuries ago, or called to mind the British Army, foreign mercenaries, tyrants, and kings. So they said militia instead. But they meant a real body. Hamilton was scathing about the idea that the militia could just mean every Bob, Billy, and Benjamin with a musket. Such amateurs would stand no chance in modern warfare against professionals, he wrote. Well, d probably true. And requiring every citizen to become a professional would be ridiculous, he said. It would be a real grievance to the people and a serious public inconvenience and loss. What do you call taking away every single... Well, they can't take away our freedoms. We have to abdicate our freedoms. We have to say, oh, well, we can't do that because the government said so. No one can take away your freedom if you don't let them. You have to allow it to happen. 
<sighs> and yes, sometimes freedom is a public inconvenience. Sometimes. Taking people away from their work in order to train them would form an annual deduction from the produ productive labor of the country. Yeah, ooh, productive laborers, those that are well enough trained to do the job and yet not allowed to have any kind of critical thinking or imagination or thinking outside the box because then you might tell us what to do with that job. And we need you lackeys. Mm. Apparently, according to this young man, the Second Amendment is an instrument of government. Uh, it's not about hunting or gun collecting or carrying your pistol into a saloon. The Founding Fathers left it up to us to pass sensible laws about all of these things. The Constitution is about government. The Constitution is supposed to be about controls on the government, not the people. Today we have a professional army anyway. Military matters have become so complex that no part-time soldier could do it all. So you could argue that that makes the Second Amendment null and void. <laughs> wow, this guy just really has an, an interesting way of looking at things. You know, like the parts of the Constitution about slaves and Indians being counted as three-fifths of a person in the census. That was for voting and for deciding how many representatives in the House of Representatives. And it was all a bunch of bullshit. So, he goes on to say, But even if you still want to defend the Second Amendment, it should apply only to those who volunteer to join the select corps. This single finger salute of the National Guard. Undergo rigorous training and attain proficiency in military functions and perform the operations of an army, serve as ordered under the ultimate command of the president, and be subject, subject to military discipline. Oh, kiss my ass. <clears throat> so if you're running around waving your AK-47 under the Second Amendment, and you haven't shown up yet at your local National Guard headquarters, you are not a patriot. You're a deserter. Well, honey... Brett Ahrens. Hun. Wow. Mm. Interesting perspective. I happen to disagree with it vehemently, but interesting perspective. And there's two comments here. Um, David D. Uh, says, uns unsupportable conclusion based on let me see what that is um okay david d this article is getting close to two years old it appears that this website has a propaganda like desire to see the people of america disarmed and um wait a minute here that's got more than uh that one was 13 minutes ago Eight minutes ago. So, Adam Green responded to David D. and said, Unsupportable conclusion based on insufficient evidence. It's much more likely that they were simply saving money with reruns instead of paying for fresh material from contributors. Uh, you know, I, I happen to agree with David D. Swing Trader says, What BS? The National Guard isn't the militia. It's basically part-time U.S. Army. All the guns, etc., owned by the National Guard are owned by the federal government. What Federalist 29 does say is since this is a citizen army, they do indeed have a right to military-type weapons, i.e. completely destroying the left's arguments that citizens aren't intended to own AR-15-style guns. There are several mentions of standing armies being used against the people. The National Guard is a standing army, basically just an extension of regular army. So please, the author infers that it would be possible for governors to call up the National Guard to stand against the regular army, marines, and air force. Yeah, I like that one. Okay. Market Watch. I'm going to just go ahead and share this and let y'all 
Um, Oh, Edward Williams says, actually, what matters is not the Federalist number 29 says, as I'm sure gun proponents can find many documents from the same period saying something different. What matters is what the Supreme Court of today says. The Supreme Court said in the District of Columbia versus Heller, the Supreme Court said that the Second Amendment protects an individual's right to possess a firearm unconnected with service in a militia or traditionally lawful purposes, such as self-defense. So, there's lots and lots of comments on here if you wish to go ahead and, and peruse them. Thank you, Rob Works, for passing around the bubbler again. Flashback cartoon? What? Yeah, I know, Beetle. I know that it's all of that uh, strontium, barium, and aluminum, and all that other nastiness stuff that they've been spraying around. And yeah, I just got back from Colorado where they were laying it on heavy. So, yeah. But out here in the wilds of Kansas, when the wind blows, so does the dirt. So, yeah, it gets very, very dirty out here. And I'm not talking in a fun way. <laughs> huh. Okay. I'm going to put this over here on the effing side as well. Holy smokes. An hour has gone by already. Wow. I haven't gotten to half of what I wanted to. Now, um, I do have to say, I listened to some stuff about QAnon today as well. I don't know why, but I find that stuff fascinating. A lot of it's, you know, in one end, out the other kind of thing. <laughs> it's brain food that just kind of works its way through the system. Um, and I'm, I haven't decided yet if, if it is... Um, like a controlled opposition kind of thing. You know, covering all the bases, if you will. Uh, but, um, come on, add the link. Add the link. Thank you. Um, in, the, in one of the QAnon things, I think it was from yesterday, he had mentioned... Um, John Perry Barlow. And I knew that name sounded really familiar. And in that video, and I'll just go ahead and share the link to that video. Um, this gentleman, Space Shot 76, reads something from John Barlow. Um, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, Beetle. I'm hydrating. And I need to, I need to drink... Um, lots of water with some lemon oil in it. But for now, I'm drinking coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's made with well water, though, so, hey! Okay, so I'm going to go back to this John Barlow thing. Because I, I, I did a DuckDuckGo search on him. I prefer DuckDuckGo over Google. Just because, just because. I like that little duck. Uh... But as I was perusing some of the John, and, and this young man was talking about in that video about um, how uh, he wasn't sure if John Barlow had passed on to the great beyond or not. So um, while I was perusing, I found that, yes, he had. He did so in February of this year. Which is why I went, ah, because as I read a little bit more, it's like Grateful Dead. Ah, now I know why I know that name. So, this is from MyModernMet.com. And it's 25 Principles of Adult Behavior by John Perry Barlow that are rules to live by. And it was written by Jessica Stewart on February 12th of 2018. The Loss of the Internet Pioneer political activist, Grateful Dead lyricist, and cattle rancher John Perry Barlow at 70 years is cause for reflection on his achievements. 
a modern Renaissance man and rebel, Barlow's fight for civil liberties as a founding member of the Electronic Frontier Foundation and Freedom of Press Foundation have left behind a legacy that has inspired internet hackers, whistleblowers, and activists around the globe. His eclectic life is one that made him as comfortable with high-powered politicians as with deadheads. As close friend Stephen Levy shared in his compelling tribute in Wired, Barlow's impact is such that even those who aren't familiar with his name have long been grappling with his vision of the networked world, one where speech and creativity flow unfettered and truth targets power with the speed of a bullet. Barlow was a man of principles, one who wished to make the internet a world that all may enter without privilege or prejudice accorded by race, economic power, military force, or station of birth. A world where anyone, anywhere, may express his or her beliefs, no matter how singular, without fear of being coerced into silence or conformity. So see, it's even a world for Hansels. <laughs> All you RLMers. We need a Hansel, if for no other reason than to know what a Hansel is. So, it should be unsurprising that Barlow not only lived by his own code of ethics, but also published these tenets. Barlow wrote The Principles of Adult Behavior when he was 30 as a way to hold himself accountable. He didn't expect perfection, but these 25 rules provided guidelines to live by. And he invited friends and colleagues who saw him straying to bust him. His passing is a good time to remember this list of principles that anyone can look to for guidance. So, Number one, be patient no matter what. And that is a toughie. That is a toughie. But I have learned, grasshopper, to have patience. I used to say, I am not a doctor, therefore I have no patience. Now I'm acquiring patience, whether I'm a doctor or not. <laughs> Number two, don't badmouth. Assign responsibility, not blame. Say nothing of another you wouldn't say to him. Yeah, in other words, don't be going and talking about someone behind their back. If you're going to say something about them, say it to them. If you cannot say it to them, shut up. I get that. Number three, never assume the motives of others. Um, okay, never assume the motives of others are to them less noble than yours are to you. And yeah, everybody has their own perspective. Everybody has their own opinion. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one and they all stink. Perspectives are the same thing. Sometimes people have a really shitty outlook and sometimes they don't. Number four, expand your sense of the possible. Anything. You know, it's not when people say something is impossible, perhaps that's one of those casting a spell things that, that they say that the leeches that be are supposedly doing, you know, the uh, Illum and Nadis and all of those other leeches that be out there. Instead of saying something is impossible, maybe that's two words. Maybe it's supposed to be I'm possible. You ever think of that? Number five, don't trouble yourself with matters you truly cannot change. And see, a lot of the stuff going on in the federal government and a lot of the nonsense that's going on right now, you, number one, you cannot change someone else's mind. You cannot. You can plant seeds you can give them examples, you can express your opinion, you can give them facts. They are still going to see it from their own perspective. So if someone is not going to go along with how you see things, 
it is not your business to change them. It is their business. It is your business to change yourself. Number six, expect no more from anyone than you can deliver yourself. Huh. Yeah, in other words, I need to stop ranting and raving, expecting everybody else to be perfect when I know I am, well, I am perfect. I'm a perfect angel when I want something and a perfect pain in the backside when I don't get it. And sometimes I can be a perfect idiot. So, you know, depends on how you look at perfection, doesn't it? Mm. Uh, number seven, tolerate ambiguity. Ah, that's the whole weeble, wobble, wiffle, waffle, swaying with the breeze kind of thing. Sometimes that's not a bad thing. Number eight, laugh at yourself frequently. Oh, I laugh at myself all the time. Because there are some times when I go, wow, did I really just do that? On purpose even? Or did I really just say that out loud? Yeah. Yeah, I laugh at myself a lot. Number nine, concern yourself with what is right rather than who is right. In other words, don't keep arguing just because you want to be seen as right. Because perhaps the other person has a valid point of view. And maybe, just maybe, it wouldn't hurt you one little bit to go... Oh, wow, hadn't thought of it like that. Mm, that's a nice way of saying you're right without losing any kind of ego. Just saying, oh, wow, hadn't thought of it like that. That's my ego saver. What little ego I have left <laughs> from all that laughing at it. Number 10, never forget that no matter how certain you might be wrong, I have worn that badge before multiple times it it got worn out for a while there I, I thought maybe I was gonna have to order a new one because it was getting a little bit frayed around the edges yeah I wore that I'm wrong again badge mm. but then again occasionally I'm right and so it kind of makes me feel a little bit better and I can move about my day number 11 give up blood sports yes 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 gotta agree with that one yeah Number 12, remember that your life belongs to others as well. Don't risk it frivolously. Basically, I think what he's meaning there is that, you know, you do have family, you do have friends, you have others that care about you. And so don't go out doing the whole, hold my beer, watch this shit. I mean, I just, I saw something actually today on Facebook, a good friend of mine, um, well, I don't suppose I can say good friend. I haven't talked to her for a while, but a friend of mine's daughter, this is going to sound rather convoluted, but her daughter's fiancé was killed in a four-wheeler accident yesterday. And they have a little one. And it sucks. His life did not just belong to him. It belonged to his fiancé and to his child. And to his parents and his siblings and his friends and yeah it's yeah it happens I get that accidents happen but please think about others before you do the whole hold my beer watch this shit number 13 never lie to anyone for any reason and lies of omission are sometimes exempt which, you know, some I consider lies of omission to be, it's none your business what really goes on in my personal life. Yeah, that's kind of sort of a lie of omission because I'm out here sharing all kind of stuff about my personal life. But there's some things that I don't think is any of your business and therefore I don't share them. So, but yeah, other than that, don't lie to people. It's just not cool. I try to live by the axiom, I don't do to others what I don't want done to me. So, number 14, learn the needs of those around you and respect them. Yeah. Also, learn to respect your own needs. And don't just acquiesce because someone else thinks that their needs trump yours. I've lived that too. 
Number 15. Avoid the pursuit of happiness. Seek to define your mission and pursue that. You know what? Happiness happens. Happiness, well, actually, happiness doesn't really happen. Happiness is a state of being. You don't have to pursue it. You really don't. Happiness is just a way of being. Um, number 16, reduce your use of the first person pronoun. Okay. Is that I, 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 me, 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 I, mm, I sucked at English. <laughs> I really did. That's my first language, too. Uh, number 17. Praise at least as often as you disparage. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everything in balance, my dear, everything in balance. And it all eventually balances out anyway. Number 18. Admit your errors freely and soon. Oh, God, I'm usually the first one that admits my errors. I say, ooh, to err is human, and some days I am superhuman. Ta, 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 ta. I have a cape to prove it, too. <laughs> yeah, I usually admit my errors first because it's a lot easier to deal with someone going, did you really? Yeah, that was me. That was, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. <sighs> Number 19, become less suspicious of joy. You know, I still see that. People, especially when, well, especially when I got laid off and people were like, she's smiling. Why is she smiling? <laughs> because I was going to quit <laughs> till you laid me off. Now I can get unemployment. Ha ha! <laughs> Moving along. Uh, number 20, understand humility. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I got nothing else to add to that. Number 21, remember that love forgives everything. It does not forget, though. Remember that. Don't forget that. Love does forgive everything. And you know why? Because the person you need to forgive is yourself. Because when you are angry at someone else, who's it hurting? It's hurting you. Because you are, you are wasting your valuable time and your valuable energy on being angry at someone else who may not even know that you're angry at them or who may not even realize that they did something that caused you to be angry at them, which it really didn't cause it. That's all an internal process. So, yeah, love yourself enough to forgive everything because you know what? You're going to you're going to have bonehead moments. But don't forget it cuz there's a lot of lessons in those kind of things. Forgive it, yes. Don't forget it. Number 22, foster dignity. <laughs> I got to work on that one. <laughs> Number 23, live memorably. Oh man, I've had some memorable moments. And I get reminded of them every time we have a family reunion. <laughs> oh, number 24, love yourself. Yes. Yes. You cannot learn to love another unless you love yourself. It really is that simple. But loving yourself doesn't mean you have to like yourself all the time. But you do have to appreciate that you've got this life and you need to appreciate it and love yourself. And if you don't like what you're doing, change what you're doing. Love yourself enough to change what you don't like. And lastly, number 25, endure. Yeah, endure. Not Endora from Bewitched, endure. So, how many of these rules do you strive to live by? Wow, there's going to be some of those that are going to be a little on the rough side for this old broad. But, I will strive. Well, I won't strive. I'll just keep on keeping on. Um, what's that? I don't assume they're less noble. I just know they're wrong. <laughs> Good one, Grim. <laughs> Oh, Mar I didn't realize that. Market watch never varies from the establishment line. Thank you, Graham. 
Okay, you know what? It's almost uh, 7.30, 1930 according to my computer clock. So I think it's about time I go check out the pig, see what happened this date in history on this Freaker Friday. And, ooh, a Sander Siesta. What the hell is that? Apparently, it's a radicalized lefty who feels the burn so strongly that they held gun down or that, okay, let me read re, re, a little bit of that too. A radicalized lefty who feels the burn so strongly they gun down some congressional Republicans. Okay. Um, I don't get it, but that's okay. Because there's just a lot of things I don't pay attention to anymore because, you know what? It's paying attention. And I want my time to be spent wisely. Have you ever noticed how it all comes back to monetary nonsense? The whole language. Okay, their pick of the day is before you diagnose yourself with depression or low self-esteem, first make sure that you are not, in fact, just surrounded by assholes. Thank you for that pick of the day, pigster guys. Freud. Freud. I'm sure Freud said that. <clears throat> Not. Okay. Um, back to the pig. In the quotable quotes section, it's time for a political divorce, a nasty process which must necessarily divide the community properly. America. Sovereign individuals will move to their portion of America and restore the kind of government, the bastion of individual liberty that the Founding Fathers created. Okay. And the Sandersias, or, uh, yeah, Sandersistas, okay, uh, would be free to devour each other when they discover that all the achievers live in the sovereign individual part of America. Oh, that's from Hambo. Thank you, Hambo, for that lovely little quotable quotes. Um, okay, in their tasty tidbits, today's aviation topic is how to fly a helicopter. I wonder if this is a Rodney Carrington one. Although flying a helicopter may seem very difficult, the truth is that you can, if you can drive a car, you can. With just a few minutes of instructions, take the controls of one of these amazing machines. Of course, you would immediately crash and die. This is why you need to remember that rule number one of helicopter piloting is always have someone sitting right next to you who actually knows how to fly the helicopter and can snatch the controls away from you. Because the truth is that helicopters are nothing at all like cars. Cars work because of basic scientific principles that everybody understands. It's just most don't apply. Such as internal combustion and parallel parking. Whereas scientists still have no idea what holds helicopters up. Whatever it is, it could stop at any moment. Is the current feeling. And this leads us to rule number two of helicopter piloting. Maybe you should forget the entire thing. This was what I was thinking on a recent Saturday morning as I stood outside a small airport in South Florida where I was about to take my first helicopter lesson. This was not my idea. This was the idea of Pam Galawadawadihwata of Pam, who is a pilot who flies radio reporters over Miami during rush hour so they can alert drivers to traffic problems. Bob, we have a three-mile backup on the interstate due to an overturned cocaine truck. Pam is, act is active in an international organization of women helicopter pilots called Gloria Steinem. Avert your eyes. It's the Whirly Girls. And she thought it would be a great idea for me to take a helicopter lesson. Well, I began having severe doubts when I saw Pam's helicopter. This was a small helicopter. It looked like it should have a little slot where you insert quarters to make it go up and down. 
I knew that if we got airborne in this helicopter the size of South Florida, some of the larger tropical in flying insects would very well attempt to mate with us. Ah. Also, this helicopter had no doors. As a frequent flyer, I know for a fact that all of your leading airlines, despite being bankrupt, maintain a strict safety policy of having doors on their aircraft. So, don't we need a larger helicopter, I asked Pam, with doors? And she just said, get in. Well, you know, you don't defy a direct order from a whirly girl. So, now we're in the helicopter and Pam is explaining the controls to me over the headset. But they're static and the engine is making a lot of noise. So, it came across as your throttle something. She is saying, this is the cycle and something, your collective. What? Something, 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 give you the controls when we reach 500 feet. What? But Pam is not listening. She's moving a control thing and whoa, <laughs> we are off the ground hovering. And now, whoa, <laughs> we are shooting up in the air and there are still no doors on this particular hel helicopter. Now Pam is giving me the main control thing. Rule number three of helicopter piloting. If anybody tries to give you the main control thing, refuse to take it. Well, Pam says you don't need hardly any pressure to, I, yeah, that was way too much pressure. Mm. So now I'm flying the helicopter. I am flying the helicopter. And I am flying it not by moving a single body part for fear of jiggling the control thing. I look like Lincoln, memorial statue of Abraham Lincoln, only more rigid. So then Pam says, make a right turn. <laughs> and I gingerly move the thing one zillionth of an inch to the right and the helicopter leans toward my side. And there is still no door here. I instantly move the thing one zillionth of an inch back. I'm not turning right, I told Pam, to which she says, what? Only left turns, I tell her. When you've been flying a helicopter as long as I have, you know your limits. <laughs> so after a while, it becomes clear to Pam that if she continues to allow the Lincoln statue to pilot the helicopter, we're going to wind up flying in a straight line until we run out of fuel, possibly over Antarctica. So she takes the control thing back. That is the good news. The bad news is she's now saying something about demonstrating an emergency procedure. If for when your engine dies, Pam says, it's called auto rotation. Do you like amusement park rides? <laughs> no, I do. <laughs> Rule number four of helicopter piloting. Auto rotation means coming down out of the sky at about the same speed and aerodynamic stability as that of a forklift dropped from a bomber. Yippee. Now we're close to the ground, although my stomach is still 500 feet. And Pam is completing my training by having me hover the helicopter. Rule number five of helicopter piloting. You can't hover a helicopter. The idea is to hang over one spot on the ground. I'm hovering over an area approximately the size of Australia. And I'm swooping around sideways and backwards like a crazed bumblebee. So if I were trying to rescue a person from the roof of a 100-story burning building, the person would realize that it would be safer to simply jump. At times, I think I'm hovering upside down. Even Pam is starting to look nervous. So I'm very happy when we finally get back on the ground. Pam tells me, <clears throat> I did a great job. She'd be glad to take me up again. I tell her that sounds like a fun idea. Rule number six of helicopter piloting, lie a lot. Yeah, I, you ain't getting me up in one of those things. 
Okay, this date in history. Yeah, I know. I went off on a tangent. The 16th of March, 1659. First known check written by J-O-E or in J-O-E, jolly old England, for those of you who are not familiar. Since it's for 400 pounds, it's deemed too heavy to bounce. Wow, I did not know that. This date in history, the 16th of March, 1838. Kentucky elected tormentors go soft and mushy. Pass legislation bestowing con conditional approval for Wenchlets to attend school. Bluegrass state dudes shocked to discover that sis isn't the only marriageable female in the hood. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Chloe, but yeah, that's a redneck joke there. A hillbilly joke. Hmm. If you guys want more piggish, politically incorrect stuff, come on over to PIGazette.com and tell Hambo and Porkus that Grammy sent you. And they'll go, damn, she's still alive? Jeez. <laughs> oh, well. Let's see. What's going on over here in the chat? Uh, it staggers you all the time. Really? Add quote. The thought of how far the human race would have advanced without government simply st Staggers the imagination. Yeah, it is rather staggering. That's from Doug Casey. Thank you, Grimmy, for that. Yeah, just imagine if you didn't have someone running around going, I have authority over you, and they're not your parent, and you're not under 18. Wow, go figure. It's like, huh? I mean, my mother still has authority over me because she still scares hell out of me. <laughs> She did have ten of us and let us all live past puberty, you know. Okay, I'm going to go check my pocket real quick. Well, let me see. Do I have something else open? Um, okay, Lisa B., I'm going to try and leave you on a on a happy note. Um, okay, or maybe not, huh, I know I put, oh, so, this is one that Lisa B. shared on uh, Fakey Book, actually she sent it to me in a message, and it's from awarenessact.com, and I thought, ah, Cool, let's check this shit out. 27 strange symptoms people are experiencing worldwide. So, we're doing numerical things, apparently. There's something going on energetically in a big way. And I'm sure if you're energy sensitive, you can feel this in more ways than one. Our world is always going through energetic changes. And this has, or this one has me all out of whack. I've noticed many people in many different places experiencing similar things. These are all symptoms associated with the change in energy we are facing in current times. And actually there is a power shift going on. Uh, you can feel that and you can see it by all of the nonsense that the corporate lay mass propaganda system is putting out there and that all of the those religion nutters in government, because yeah, that is the most dangerous belief system is a belief that government is actually for us. So there is a power shift going on though. There is a frequency change. Now don't get me wrong, these things are all signs of something fantastic that is heading our way. While some of these symptoms may be hard to deal with, the effects this energy is going to have is overwhelmingly positive. So if you are energy sensitive, you know that much at the very least. Now here are the symptoms that uh, I strongly, let's see, I think a lot of people are affecting people and I strongly suggest that you increase your meditation and basically I'm going to go outside and play in the dirt. That's my form of meditation. So number one, you are struggling to make decisions that need to be made and you're not able to focus, and it's making a huge difference in your life. Wow, that, that, mm, I'm not having that symptom. Number two, 
You're going through intense waves and conflicting emotions, and you feel so moody you don't know what to do with yourself at times. These waves come and go. Well, it's called a radio show, hun, and once I get done with the radio, I pretty much have all of the evil spirits out of the building. And I put them in other people's buildings, and they thank me ever so vigorously for that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Number three, you get chills out of nowhere. Okay, and I just thought that was a breeze in this drafty old house. Huh. Number four, you are more aware of the things around you. It's like your senses are becoming more active. Well, I have noticed that in the last week or so, but I think some of that has to do with not having to drive into Woik every day. <laughs> Number five, you experience intense headaches in specific places. For instance, you will have a headache on just one side of your head. I haven't had a headache in so damn long. I, mm, no. Uh, number six, your eyes are becoming more clear. Not today, they aren't. This will be something that you notice right off the bat looking in the mirror that everything is just so much less broken up and the colors in your iris are more intense. Oh, so that's why I'm noticing all of those laugh lines now. Yeah, thanks, my eyes are getting good enough to see all the laugh lines. <laughs> Number seven. You're not wanting to spend as much time using your phone or around the television. This energy is pushing you to be more active in who you are. Well, I do have to admit that I've been spending a lot of time outside and playing with plants and kids. Uh, number eight, you keep hearing sounds that are not actually there. No one else is hearing them but you. Oh, God, yes. Now that one, yeah. And it depends on the day because you know, it's it's not tinnitus, but there's, and the the uh, level and the pitch changes. Not every day, but yeah, that one, that one I know. Number nine, you are seeing more and more synchronicities in your life. This meaning you notice double numbers or even come across someone from your past. Oh, yeah, okay, number nine, yeah, mm-hmm. Um... Grimmy, thanks for the headache. You sweetheart, you. Um, wow. Really, Beetle? Da see, sweetheart? You are going through... You are going through a shift, my dear. Okay. Uh, let's see. And yeah, I am seeing a lot more synchronicities have been for like the last couple of years. Number 10, your chakras feel out of whack. You're experiencing pain or strange sensations in different chakra points. Nope, nope. Once I went to Lisa B and got my chakras all aligned and stuff, things are good. Things are golden. Took two treatments altogether. Uh, but yeah, although I may... I made just for shits and giggles. Nah, I just like going and hanging with Lisa and going out for supper, so. Thanks, Lisa, for this article, by the way. Number 11, you are struggling to sleep or sleeping too much. These energies affect us all in different ways. Now, I have noticed, God, for like the last month or so, that sometimes sleep can be quite the struggle. And then I'm ready for a nap at around 2-ish in the afternoon you know so turn on Netflix something that I won't mind viewing through my eyelids and <laughs> that's usually the way that works uh, number 12 you feel far more sensitive than you normally do mm -hmm. I don't know about that one number 13 you notice a change in your eating pattern as well you either eat more less or crave odd things okay yeah Number 13, yeah, ding, 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 winner, winner, chicken dinner. Number 14, you feel like you have more energy than you have had in a long time. Um, it is if you are suddenly overcharged somehow. Well, that too comes in spurts. <laughs> 
Number 15, you feel out of it or fatigued. See, I have the, the Energizer Bunny moment, and then all of a sudden I'm like, I need a nap. And then I go all Energizer Bunny again, and then I need a nap again. So, yeah, it's kind of weird. Number 16, you feel like the life you are living is not your own. It is as if you are going through some kind of out-of-body experience. Um, I'm going to have to think about that one. Number 17, you're noticing intense visuals during meditation. Mm, nope. Number 18, old resentments and fears are making their way to the surface and you do not know how to deal with them. Oh, no, no. I'd, I'd, I've dealt with most of those already. I'm not going to say all of them because, hey, they haven't all surfaced yet, but most of those have been dealt with and it's like, mm, it's in the past, can't change it, move along. Learn your lesson and keep on moving. Number 19, your stomach is upset. You're either nauseous or constipated, and your insides are going through changes as well. No, 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 no. Nope. Uh, number 20, you're a bit more clumsy than normal, and you may fall down more or just um, unable to stay balanced. Now, I do have my swaying moments. But usually that's because I turn too quickly or I have a dog. <laughs> it pretty much keeps me off balance. Number 21, you feel more impatient than you normally do. Even the smallest task can have you stressed more than it should by far. No, no. Number 22, your dreams are more vivid. Uh, last night they were. Ah, oh, I had wild ass dreams. Uh, weird, weird last night. No, I'm not telling you about them. Weird. 23, you notice that lots of people in your life just don't fit into things anymore. They are not reflecting who you are or who you are working towards becoming. Hmm. I guess I don't really notice that. <laughs> I must be very unobservant on that line. Number 24, electronics are actually acting strangely in your presence. They may be dying randomly or just shut off for no reason. Mm, yeah, some are. Number 25, you are no longer satisfied. You feel like there needs to be some kind of change, but you cannot point out what kind of change you need. No, no, that, no, no, I'm good on that one. Don't need that one. Number 26, you're struggling to deal with your anger. You do not quite know what to do with it, and you are exploding more and more. You used to not be this way. Mm, no, pretty much the only time I get really angry or frustrated is when I'm trying to move the garden hose and the dogs drop the ball right behind me, and I trip and almost fall. Did I mention I have a dog? I have two. <laughs> little turds. That's when I get angry. Yes. And lastly, number 27, you're being more forgetful than you normally would be. Oh, hell, I thought that was just chemtrails kicking in. Hmm. Well, be that as it may, I do have some of these. So I will go ahead and share these. Hey, Goober, I see you're back. Um, let's see. Let's see. 24, yes. 25, neg. Yeah. Oh, cool beans, Beetle. Okay, I'm going to put this over on the effing side, and it looks like I'm getting right down to the wire again. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on this Freaker Friday, and man, have I covered some freaky... Wow, I have gone all over the spectrum of things to consider and ponder and and rant and rave about hmm but it is a freaky friday so hey what do you expect in any case uh be sure to stick around because grimmy and moose girl will be here for the freakers ball later on this evening also tomorrow at 11 o'clock my time noon eastern time join me and flash a rooney dork for the dork table where we will solve every problem in the world because we said so <laughs> 
That's just the way that works. I'm telling you. Um, let's see. And then I'm not real sure what else is going on tomorrow, if anything. I'm sure JJ's will be playing over on webcom.co.uk because JJ's is always playing tunage and he always plays some fun tunage. Some of it I've never heard before, but hey, that's JJ's. He's so awesome. Um, then on Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimner will be jumping on the RLM. Jump, Grimmy! to uh, play some blues for y'all. And I'm sure there will be a rousing game of trivia going on in the RLM chat. Wish I could stay and play, but well, no. I'm going to see grandkids and daughters and mom and yeah. So there. I have plans. Um, but directly following Grimner will be Hal Anthony, who's going to take y'all ass behind the woodshed and open up a can of whoop ass. And he's very good at it, too. And the crickets, they will be sitting back in their little crickety lawn chairs with their little crickety popcorn and their little crickety adult cricket beverages and watching you get your ass whooped behind the woodshed. Also, Sunday evening, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, Gary Ellen Gigi's Boo with The Road Less Traveled. So there is lots and lots going on this weekend. And also, tomorrow is St. Patty's Day. Um, go drink some green beer or not. I, I never could get into that whole green beer thing. I don't like draft beer, number one, anyway. So, you know, that was kind of a, mm, no. And there's something about green teeth. No. Or a green tongue. Ew. So, no. I just don't. And I'm not doing any of that parade stuff, neither. So, yeah, have fun with that. I'll stay home and I will exercise my green thumb because the wind is not supposed to be so blustery tomorrow. So I will go play outside. That'll be my green for the day. Um, let's see. Not a whole heck of a lot else going on, I guess. I have a couple minutes left, so let me go check and see if I've got one more thing. Um... What? That's a paid post. I don't want to go there. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Where else do I want to go? Mm, there's. Oh, here we go. Mm, no, that's that's kind of. Never mind. Um. Okay, we'll do this one real quick. It's from a non-HQ, and it's from the tenth of March 2015 so it's back a ways but still it's a small 9-11 truth victory unknown it's an unknown case to most Americans but a UK man won the case against BBC for the 9-11 cover-up a a yes flasher 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 okay um in Horsham, UK, 2013, Tony Rourke, in an act of civil disobedience, refused to pay the mandatory 130-pound TV license fee, claiming it violates Section 15 of the Terrorism Act. Um, Rourke's accusation was aimed at the BBC, who reported the collapse of De World Trade Center 7 over 20 minutes before it actually fell. And the judge accepted Rourke's argument. While it was not a public inquiry into 9-11, the recognition of the BBC's actions on September 11th are considered a small victory, one that was never reported in the U.S. Today was a historic day for the 9-11 Truth Movement, Peter Drew of AE 9-11 Truth UK told Digital Journal with over 100 members of public attending, including numerous journalists from around the UK as well as from across other parts of Europe. Under Section 363 of the Communications Act, citizens of the UK are required to purchase an annual license in order to use a television receiver. Rook refused to pay the license fee due to a section of the Terrorism Act that states it is an offense for someone to invite another to provide money intending that it should be used or having reasonable cause to suspect that it may be used for terrorism purposes. 
the fact that the BBC reported the collapse of World Trade Center Tower 7 23 minutes before it actually fell indicates that the UK was aware of the attacks on 9-11 before they actually happened. The direct implication is that they were working with the terrorists. All arguments as to who the terrorists actually were aside. And there is an attached video of the broadcast of the BBC's announcement that World Trade Center 7, or the Solomon Brothers building, collapsed when it was still standing behind the reporter. So, leave you with that little victory that I don't know if you knew about it or not, but you do now. So, y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening, and I will catch up with you later, if not at the Freakers Ball, then definitely tomorrow morning. Please remember, I truly do love you all, and I wish you all enough. Good night.